Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another grade six science screencast. The topic for today is going to be introduction to seed dispersal. Just a reminder, as usual and as with all of these screencast videos, you can at any time pause the video or go back in case you need to, you know, hear some information again or you need extra time to get your answer down. The objectives for today's video. Today you're going to learn about the four main types of seed dispersal and you'll know you've got it when you can correctly identify the type of dispersal used by a seed based on its physical characteristics. So um, before we go forward just make sure that you have the following items. Something to write with and your introduction to seed dispersal screencast note sheet. So the first question that we have is what is seed dispersal? Well, seed dispersal is the movement of seeds away from the parent plant. Now, as humans, we're sitting there wondering, well, why would a seed, which is basically a baby tree or a baby plant, why would it want to move away from the parent? Because as humans, you know, when we're babies, we're really reliant on our parents. Well, there's a really good reason why seeds disperse, and it's, it's to increase the area that the plant inhabits and it also makes sure that the baby seed, the baby plant, does not have to compete with the parent plant for resources such as water, sunlight, space, and nutrients. So in terms of plants, you know, the parent plant is not saying, oh, I'm not gonna take this water, I'm gonna give it to, the baby, to, to my baby. It would just use it for itself and the baby's tree would have to be in constant competition with the older ones and larger ones. So it's kind of a good idea for, those, for them to move away. Now there are four main methods of seed dispersal. These are not in any particular order, and the methods are animal, wind, water, and explosion. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna look at each of these kinds of seed dispersal in a little bit more detail. And the first type we're gonna look at is dispersal by animals. Um, the, so the first type of dispersal by animals is winter storage. What we're going to do now is watch a short video clip of a squirrel hiding a seed that it has um, collected for winter storage. So in the video you just watched, you saw that there was a squirrel who had collected some sort of seed or nut, and it buried it, uh, it, buried it in, in a location so that it could use it later on in the season when food was scarce. Now what happens is sometimes these animals will bury these objects and forget where they had buried them. So in turn, what's happening is they are dispersing the seeds and planting the next generation of that plant. Animals also help disperse seeds by eating them. So here we have cherries, strawberries, a cantaloupe, and some winter squash. When animals eat these fruits, the seed is not digested when it goes through their digestive tract. So when they go to the bathroom, they in effect are um, planting the seeds of these, of these fruits and planting the next generation of the plant. Another way that animals disperse seeds is by this procedure called excess baggage. There are some seeds such as the beggar tick that's shown here that attaches itself to an animal's hair or fur. And the goal of this seed is that it will attach itself, the animal will move away from the area and at some distance from the area where the seed was picked up, the animal might rub up against a tree trunk or something like that and the seed will fall off and be planted in a different location. You can see in the picture on the right that, that uh, those are the legs of some young ladies who are, who are um, students here at Hammerschold um, from last year's Dallenbach's trip. They had gone through an area and ended up with beggar ticks all over their pants. Another way seeds are dispersed is by the wind. And seeds that are dispersed by the wind come in a variety of shapes. The first shape is the parachute shape. So here you can see that the little seeds of this dandelion actually do look like miniature parachutes. 
The parachute shape allows the seed to be picked up by the wind and carried some distance. Milkweed also uses this parachute approach. You can see the actual plant on the left, and then on the right you can see the fluffy parachute-like appendage attached to the brown seed. Thistles also use this method of dispersal. Another method of dispersal by wind is the use of the helicopter appendage. So here on the left, you can see the pine samara. This black part here is the seed, and then this appendage here is that helicopter-like propeller. Maples also have this. So here, the seed is in this section here, and this growth here is strictly for dispersal. And what happens here is that as the seed falls, the seed is hoping there'll be a little gust of wind, and then the propeller-like shape will carry the seed some distance away from the parent plant. There are also some flutterers. Flutterers um, have a, very, a little bit of a different shape, and they allow the seeds to, be, to travel longer distances on the wind. So here we have the quipo tree, and you can see on the right the seed shape, and that is one of the flutterers. Another flutterer is this hop seed. At the top, you can see what the plant itself looks like, and on the right, on the bottom, you can see specifically a close-up of what the seeds look like. It's also a flutterer. Again, flutterers travel longer distances. And lastly, we have the cottony ones. They don't really take on that parachute shape like the others. They're just fluffy, and they use that fluffiness to be carried by the wind. Water is another method of seed dispersal. And as you probably could guess, in order for a seed to be dispersed by water, it's going to have to float, right? If it sinks, it's probably not going to make it. So here are two examples of floating seeds. On the top left, you have water lilies. And you can see here, these are the seed pods, right? So this is the pod. These little circles here are the seeds. They're growing right in the water. So what will happen is these seeds will be dispelled into the water and then float away from the parent plant. Down here, we do have a coconut. We usually associate coconuts with tropical places near the shore. So these plants grow right near the shore. They're circular in shape, so they can kind of roll off the beach and into the water, and then the current can transport them some distance away. The last method of dispersal is called explosion. Now, I know a lot of you hear, um, hear explosion, and you're saying to yourself, oh, man, these things must go flying through the air, but that's really not the case. Explosion is really a method of just kind of moving the seeds a very short distance away from the parent plant. One plant that really uses explosion well is wisteria. And here you can see in the top left wisteria when it's in bloom. And then on the bottom right you can see those long skinny wisteria seed pods. We're going to watch a short video clip so that we can see and hear wisteria using the popping method of explosion. Okay, so in that video you did hear the popping of the wisteria pods. Another plant that uses um, the explosion method of popping is the touch-me-not or jewel weed. You can see in the top picture how the seed pods kind of curl open, expelling the seeds. Okay, so now that you've learned about the four different methods of seed dispersal, let's go ahead and try it. So on your worksheet, there's a chart. It gives you the plant name, and then there's a checkbox for each of the four methods of seed dispersal. As you read the information and see the pictures of each of the following plants, I want you to take into consideration what you're told and then try to see if you can figure out which method of dispersal is being used by each plant. So here we go. Plant number one is a maple. The wing-like seed pod spins as it falls. The spinning delays the fall so that the wind may carry it far distances. What kind of dispersal do you think this, this plant uses? 
The answer is wind. Plant two is a pond iris. The seed pod opens when the seed is ripe and the seeds fall into the water and then float away. Did you mark your answer? The answer is water. Plant number three is a burdock. This seed becomes attached by hooks and can get caught in the fur or hair of animals. The seed eventually falls off some distance from the parent plant. Don't forget to mark your answer. Okay, the answer is this plant is dispersed by animals. Plant number four is a gorse. The seed pod dries, swells, and bursts, shooting the seeds out. Mark your answer. This seed is dispersed by explosion. <clears throat> Plant number five is the ragwort. The feathery hairs help the seed float on the wind. They can be carried long distances. What do you think? Mark your answer. This seed is dispersed by wind. All right, plant number six is a blackberry. The berries are eaten and the small hard seed is hidden inside the fruit. Seeds are dispersed when animal leaves scat. What method of dispersal do you think this one is? All right, the answer is animal. All right, just a couple more to go. Number seven is the red campion. When the pod dries out, it splits open, as you see in the, in the pictures here. When the wind shakes, the little pot um, shakes also, and the seeds fall out. What method of dispersal do you think this one is? You would be correct if you said... Plant number eight is the oak tree. The fruit-like seeds, or acorns are eaten or buried and forgotten. They can also be dropped from the mouth of the animal if they become scared or startled. What method of dispersal do you think this is? Animal! Yay! All right, last but certainly not least, we have plant number nine, which is the cotton grass. These fluffy seeds are caught by the wind. These seeds can travel far distances. And the method of dispersal is wind. All right, guys, you did a great job on this exercise. Please make sure that you have the correct answers. Remember, if you need to go back to check any of these, you're, you're um, capable of doing that, so you should take advantage of that. Now, I want to talk to you about a place called Seychelles Island. Seychelles Island, you can see it's marked by this star right over here, so it's off the east coast of Africa. And growing here on Seychelles Island is a palm tree, and it holds the distinction for creating the world's biggest seed. That's a pretty big seed, huh? <clears throat> So we just thought you'd like to see that little bit of information about seeds since we were working on seed dispersal. Any ideas what kind of dispersal would be used for this big guy? Water would be the method of dispersal for this kind of seed. So the last part of your worksheet here is to think about it. And here's the question. Birds and other animals wait to eat berries and other fruits until they're ripe. Explain why do you think they do this? So what you're going to do here is you're going to write your answer down and it will be discussed tomorrow in class. I hope you enjoyed this screencast and that you have a great rest of your day.